Hi everyone, I'm Chef Katie Chin. I'm an award-winning cookbook author, food blogger, and caterer based in Los Angeles. I'm here to show you how to make three delicious recipes from my cookbook, Everyday Chinese Cookbook, 101 delicious recipes from my mother's kitchen. You may have seen me on Food Network's Iron Chef America, Feed Bobby Flay, or Cutthroat Kitchen, or my live streaming series. We're gonna get cooking today, we're gonna get our hands messy, cook along with me while we make pot stickers, beef with broccoli, and Chinese chicken salad. All your Chinese takeout favorites. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get cooking. dish we're gonna make today is pot stickers. I mean who doesn't love this classic Chinese dumpling or dim sum? I bet you didn't know that dim sum literally translates as to touch the heart or pieces of the heart. I love it so much. It's so much easier to make than you probably think. We're gonna start with some key ingredients for this dish. We're gonna make our pot stickers today with some ground pork but you could use ground turkey or ground chicken or even tofu. We'll also be using some dark roasted or toasted sesame oil, some salt, some white pepper, some dry white wine, cornstarch, some scallions, and some Napa cabbage. And what makes this recipe so easy to make is that we're using store-bought dumpling wrappers that I just got at a well-stocked grocery store. Okay, so let's start with our Napa cabbage. Now Napa cabbage is a little sweeter and mellower than regular cabbage, but it's totally fine to use regular cabbage. So I just shredded some Napa cabbage, as you can see here, and then I'm gonna add some salt. Now, if you guys have ever made latkes out there, you know that you need to sweat potatoes to sweat out the moisture. So it's the same technique. I'm just gonna toss our cabbage with the salt and we're going to be sweating out all the moisture in a couple of minutes. So we're just gonna let this uh, sit for a minute and then we're gonna move on to the rest of the ingredients in our filling. So to our ground pork, I'm going to add the sesame oil. black pepper and some additional salt. Some dry white wine. Okay, if you wanna take a little secret sip of it, it's okay with me. Some cornstarch. And the cornstarch is going to make the filling nice and juicy and tender and delicious. And then our scallions. So I'm just gonna mix all of this together to combine. I have to say it already smells really good. All right, I'm getting this mixed together while we let our cabbage just sit for a moment with the salt. Okay, now that we've given our Napa cabbage a minute or two to rest, I'm gonna show you how to release the moisture. You just take a clean dish towel and we're going to squeeze the moisture out of the cabbage. Now don't expect water to come gushing out of this dish towel, but it's definitely going to get moist, okay? And you'll see why we need to do this because if we don't sweat out the moisture, what happens is you're gonna have really soggy dumplings because the cabbage will release its moisture into the filling while it cooks. And we definitely do not want that. So I'm just gonna take, this is a great workout, you guys. I'm just gonna take our cabbage and salt and I'm gonna squeeze it in this dish towel. As you can see here, oh, I got some moisture coming out of this for sure. What? Okay, very good. Now I'm gonna add our cabbage into the filling. Oops, just like so. I said we were gonna, mess, gonna get messy, <laughs> all right? Okay, so now we're just gonna mix all of the ingredients together. 
with the cabbage and our pork and the other seasonings, just like so. And this is a great recipe to involve kids with because they can definitely get their hands dirty and mix up the filling for you. Okay, now that we have all of the filling ingredients combined, we're gonna go ahead and start folding our dumplings. All right, we're starting with our round dumpling wrappers. Now you can find these at any well-stocked grocery store, okay? If you can only find wonton wrappers, which are a square shape, you can just take some kitchen shears and cut off the square corners, or you could even use a cookie cutter. All right, so we're just going to lay some of our dumpling wrappers down on our cutting board, just like so. Okay, then I'm going to take about a teaspoon or so of our delicious filling. I'm gonna place it in the center of our pot sticker. You see that? Then I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to moisten the top half of the dumpling wrapper, just like so, okay? And I'm going to make a few more of these. And this is a great thing to make for a dinner party because you can get all your friends to help you make your dinner party <laughs> and they won't even realize that you put them to work, you know what I mean? All right, I'm just gonna add some more filling to the center of each dumpling wrapper, just like so. Now you can definitely improvise with different dumpling fillings. If you wanted to just use some chopped up mushrooms, some edamame, some um, tofu, and add some sesame oil and garlic and ginger, that would be just a delicious vegetarian version of this dumpling. Okay, awesome. Next, I'm going to take some water. I'm going to moisten the top half of the dumpling wrapper, just like so. You guys see that? All right. Now listen, what I always tell people is no matter what your dumplings look like, they're going to taste delicious. So don't be intimidated. Okay, it doesn't matter what they look like. They're still going to taste super delicious. I'm going to take our dumpling wrapper and the dumpling filling I'm going to basically make a bit of a half moon shape. Can you guys see that? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make little pleats, okay? I'm going to take the front half of the dumpling wrapper that is moistened with water. I'm just going to make a little pleat here and I'm gonna pinch. Can you see that? I'm just twisting just the front half of the dumpling wrapper. I'm pinching it and I'm pressing it against the back half of the dumpling wrapper. I'm just pinching and pressing. Can you see that? I'm pinching and I'm pressing, right? That was pretty easy, right you guys? Okay, I'm gonna make a few more. Now listen, if you're intimidated by the whole pleating thing, you can just make a half moon shape. That's totally fine, nobody cares. All right, once again, twisting, pleating, pressing. Twisting again, the top half, Pleating and pressing, just twisting those dumplings, you guys, just like that, right? My mother was a seamstress, so she was really amazing at this. And it took me many years to master the pleating of a dumpling. Now you can actually buy a tool that will allow you to just press the little device together, and that's totally fine too. Whatever works for you, all right? Twisting and pressing, here we go again. Twisting and pressing, you guys see that? There we go. Now a lot of people ask about freezing dumplings. I recommend if you're gonna freeze them before you cook them, put them on a cookie sheet in your freezer, let them freeze completely, then put them in a Ziploc baggie. Otherwise, they're going to freeze together, get mushy as they thaw, all right? Twisting and pleating, here we go. Twisting and pleating. Looks pretty good, right? Twisting and pleating. There we go. One more time. 
twisting and pleating. Here we go. Yay. I'm giving myself good job. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to make a couple more. Bear with me. If you're cooking along with me today, I know you want some extra time to do this properly. All right, twisting and pleating. Also, you know what's so great about dumplings is this is just sort of like a canvas for whatever ingredients you want to put into a dumpling. It's also a great way to sneak veggies into your kid's diet because, I mean, what kid doesn't love dumplings? So you could definitely add some frozen thought spinach into the dumplings, and I don't think they'd even notice, honestly. I like being sneaky with my 12-year-old twins. Okay, all right, we're almost done here. Here's our sixth dumpling. And as you can see here, about a pound of pork makes I mean, would make several dumplings. I, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna make, make about 35 dumplings. Okay, I'm just gonna continue pressing and pleating. There we go, all right. Now it's time to cook our dumplings or pan fry our dumplings. And the reason they're called pot stickers is because they kind of stick to the bottom of the pan. And what I love about this recipe so much, it's almost like dumpling magic. You know why? Because we're going to pan fry the dumplings until they get sort of nice, crispy, and golden brown. Then we're gonna add water and let, they, let them steam the rest of the way. So it's sort of a two-step process, but they're super crispy, light, and fluffy. You're just gonna love them. All right, so over here, I've been heating a non-stick pan. And then what we're gonna do is add a bit of oil. I'm using a neutral oil here. I recommend a canola oil or a vegetable oil. I'm just going to swirl and coat the oil in the pan. Then I'm going to add the pot stickers. Now you want to sort of flatten them on your cutting board. And as you can see here, they're just going to get nice and browned in the oil, like so. And it just takes about a minute or two to get a lovely golden brown texture to the bottom of our dumplings. So we just want these to brown. Let's see here. And I definitely recommend a non-stick pan for making dumplings because you need less oil and it's much easier to remove them from the pan after you've cooked them. You can even make these in a wok if you wanted to, but you can't cook as many a flat bottom skillet allows you to cook quite a few dumplings at once. All right, as you can see here, you guys, and I'm doing this on about a medium high heat, it doesn't take long at all for your dumplings to start turning nice and golden brown. Oh my God, those look so good already. What? Okay, now. Now it's time to add about a half a cup of water to the dumplings. Now the important thing is that you have a very tight fitting lid so that they can cook all the way through. So I'm adding about a half a cup of water here, and it's important to stand back because it can be a little sizzly, all right? And now I'm gonna add our tight fitting lid. So we just let these steam for about six to seven minutes or until all of the water evaporates. Now that the dumplings have been steaming for about six or seven minutes and all the water has evaporated, we're ready to plate them. Oh, they look so good. And as I was saying earlier, it is so remarkable. They stay nice and crispy and brown on the bottom and steamed and light and fluffy on top. I'm just gonna plate these. Now I like to make three or four batches of the filling because people go crazy for them. And then you can always have some ready to go in the freezer. So here are delicious pork pot stickers. I'm going to serve these with some dipping sauce, which is just some soy sauce, some sesame oil, and some, some balsamic vinegar. Again, you can get the recipes at chefkatiechin.com. I can't wait to show you our next recipe, Chinese chicken salad. But first, I have to take a bite. I mean, how can I not take a bite of these delicious dumplings? Mmm! So good. Oh my god. Delicious! Okay, see you in a minute for Chinese chicken salad. Our next recipe is Chinese chicken salad. Now legend has it that this recipe was invented in the 1960s when Madame Wu concocted it for Cary Grant at her eponymous restaurant. 
Now, whether or not the legend is true, I think we can all agree that Chinese chicken salad is one of the best tasting salads ever, okay? I mean, the crunch of the almonds, the beautiful, colorful vegetables, the sweet, sour, tangy dressing, it's just to die for. So let me take you through the ingredients for this recipe, starting with the dressing. We have some fresh minced ginger and garlic, brown sugar, some canola oil and dark toasted sesame oil, and also some rice vinegar. You could use olive oil in place of the canola oil. For the salad, we have some chopped up romaine lettuce along with some chopped scallions, sliced almonds, canned mandarin oranges, shredded rotisserie chicken, which makes it super easy and convenient. We have some shredded carrots, shredded red cabbage, and toasted sesame seeds. So let's just start with a salad dressing. We're going to combine the garlic and ginger, the brown sugar, both oils, canola, toasted sesame oil, and some rice vinegar. Then I'm just going to whisk this all to combine. And this is such a light, healthy, flavorful dressing. You can use it for all sorts of salads or even just dip some veggies in it. So yummy, so delicious. Okay, we've got this all whisked through. I'm gonna set this aside and just add all the salad ingredients. I'm gonna start with some shredded carrots and red cabbage to our romaine lettuce. I mean, to me, this salad is like eating the rainbow. It's so nutritious and so vibrant and so healthy. Some roasted rotisserie chicken. Now, obviously, if you wanted to make some chicken breast or other kind of chicken, you can just cut it up and add it to the salad or mandarin oranges for that juicy, fresh, bright note in the salad, our crunchy toasted almonds, and finally, our chopped scallions. So now I'm just going to drizzle our dressing onto our salad, and then I'm just going to toss it to combine. It smells so good, you guys. Wow. And so fast. I mean, you can get this on your table in under 10 minutes. And then I'm just going to garnish with some toasted sesame seeds. So fast, oh my goodness. And there you have it, classic Chinese chicken salad. I can't wait to take a bite of this. Uh, next up, we have beef with broccoli. I can't wait, see you soon. Our next recipe is stir fried beef with broccoli. Such a favorite at Chinese restaurants. It's such a great dish to make because when you make your own Chinese stir fried dishes, you know exactly what's going in them. And I promise you, this is gonna be better than takeout. Let me take you through the ingredients. We have some cut up steak I cut into strips, some oil, some sugar, salt and pepper, and cornstarch, soy sauce, a bit more cornstarch, oyster sauce, fresh minced ginger and garlic, chicken broth, and then, of course, our broccoli florets, which I'm gonna show you how to blanch in a minute, okay? Let's talk about the beef. So I cut the beef into strips. Today I'm using some beef tenderloin, but you could use New York steak, sirloin steak, even lang steak. The important thing to remember when you're cutting up steak or beef for a stir fry is you wanna cut against the grain. So imagine a piece of beef is like a rope. If you're cutting with the grain, you're gonna get really stringy, tough pieces of beef. What you wanna do is cut across the grain because it's gonna be a lot more tender. Another great tip I like to give is to put your beef in the freezer for about 20 minutes before you cut it because then it firms it up and it's a lot easier to cut. So we're gonna marinate our beef first. I'm gonna add 
a bit of oil, just using some neutral vegetable, or you could use canola oil today. Then I'm adding some cornstarch, salt and pepper, and a bit of sugar for some sweetness. Then I'm gonna add some soy sauce. And I'm just gonna toss all of this to combine. Now this is a classic marinade used in a lot of Chinese recipes. And we use cornstarch to marinate the proteins because it draws all the delicious seasonings into the center of the protein, protects it with a protective barrier so it doesn't overcook, makes it super juicy, tender, and delicious. So I'm just gonna toss this to combine. Now we use the same technique if you're cooking with chicken, shrimp, lamb, or pork. Okay, now we toss this so it's all coated. Stick it in the fridge for about 20 minutes, all right? Well, we don't have all day. And through the magic of TV, I happen to have some that I marinated earlier today. So you marinate it for at least 20 minutes, but you could marinate it for up to overnight. All right, I'm just gonna put our beef aside while we talk about broccoli and blanching. When you blanch, basically you take vegetables, you put them in boiling water for about one minute. Then you remove them and put them into an ice bath. And the reason you wanna do this is because the vegetables retain their vibrant, crisp, tender, crisp texture, and they don't overcook. So that's what we're gonna do to the broccoli today. So I have some water boiling over here. I'm gonna place the broccoli florets into the boiling water for about one minute. Now that our broccoli is boiled for a minute, I'm gonna remove it with a strainer into an ice bath. And this will shock the broccoli so it stops the cooking process. And as you can see here, it's so gorgeous, vibrant, and bright green. It'll just retain this beautiful color while we make the stir fry. Doesn't that look great? Oh, so gorgeous. Now I'm going to remove the chilled broccoli into a bowl. And we'll be adding this back into the stir fry in a couple of minutes. Now you can do this with all sorts of vegetables like carrots, green beans, asparagus. Next, we're gonna make our stir fry sauce. The stir fry sauce consists of some chicken broth, totally fine to use store-bought chicken broth, some cornstarch. This is gonna thicken up the sauce, the type of sauce that you love in Cantonese gravies. Adding a bit of oyster sauce. Now you can find oyster sauce in any well-stocked grocery store and Asian markets, of course. It's made with dehydrated oysters and a little bit goes a long way. If you want a non-shellfish version of this dish, you can buy a vegan or vegetarian oyster sauce in an Asian market that's actually made out of mushrooms. So it's filled with delicious umami flavor. All right, I'm just gonna whisk this to combine and set it aside and we'll add that in a little bit later. Next, I'm gonna heat a wok over here. Now listen, a lot of people feel like they have to have a wok to cook Chinese food, but that's not true. Stove tops get so hot these days, you can use just a nonstick skillet, it's totally fine. But I love woks because they're concave shape, they retain heat really well. Not only that, when you're stir frying, your food doesn't jump out of the pan. So that's an added bonus. All right, so we wanna get this uh, to about a medium high heat. Then I'm going to add some more oil. Again, we're using a neutral oil. You could use canola or vegetable oil. And then we're gonna add our fresh 
minced ginger and garlic once our pan gets heated through. Now a tip I like to give for cooking with minced ginger is to chop up a bunch in advance in a food processor, put it in a Ziploc baggie, just pat it down, stick it in the freezer, and then you can just snap off whatever you need for any stir fry dish. Super handy. Also, I do recommend using jarred garlic if you don't have fresh garlic on hand because it just makes cooking that much more convenient. Now that our oil is nice and hot, we're gonna add our aromatics, the ginger and the garlic. And we wanna add them to the oil because we're gonna flavor the oil and make the dish super delicious. So we're just gonna saute this for about 30 seconds until it becomes nice and fragrant. Smells so good already, you guys. Woo, delicious, okay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our beef, our marinated beef. Now stir frying is a bit of a, of a misnomer because you're not really stir frying, you're tossing and flipping. And you want to make sure that your pan is super hot because you want it to get a nice sear, as you can see here. Looks so good, you guys. Now you can make a chicken version of this dish. Just repeat the same process. Marinate some chicken breasts that you cut up into bite-sized pieces with the same marinade. And just stir fry it as I'm showing you here right now. Okay, now you want to continue stir frying until your beef is cooked through. Now if you like a spicy version of this dish, you could add some red chili flakes or a squeeze of sriracha. Okay, now our beef is pretty much cooked through. So now it's time to add our blanched broccoli. Look how vibrant and green our broccoli is from our blanching. Looks so good, you guys. Okay, now next, we're going to add our sauce, which we made earlier with the cornstarch, chicken broth, and so on. So as this cooks, as the pan heats through, what's going to happen is the cornstarch and the chicken broth will thicken and make a delicious, yummy gravy. So I'm just continuing to toss and flip. Looks so good. Wow. Yummy, yummy. All right. Look at that. Delicious nutritious so fast all right well, let me just grab a platter so i can plate up our incredible beef with broccoli mm. it smells divine so delicious so fresh so healthy there you have it better than takeout beef with broccoli on your table in minutes. I had so much fun cooking with you today. I think you saw how easy it is to make authentic restaurant style Chinese dishes in your own home. Let's recap what we made today. Our delicious, juicy pot stickers, classic Chinese chicken salad, and our stir fried beef with broccoli. Of course, you can find all these recipes at chefkatiechin.com. But guess what else? We are offering private Zoom classes, including grocery box delivery. So please check it out at chefkatiechin.com. So fun cooking with you guys today. Please join me next time. Until then, happy cooking and have a great day. Bye.